So guys, I wanted to start this video off a little bit different. I wanted to thank you guys. The amount of subscribers we've been getting is really overwhelming. Ever since I hit 10,000, I've been really busy with all these reviews. I didn't get a chance to thank you guys. And now we are surpassing 16,000, which is absolutely insane. But as the channel grows, I'm trying my best to be as responsible as I can with this amount of followers. I'm trying not to give blanket statements like the watch is too big or the watch is too small. Let's face it, some people have smaller wrists, some people have bigger wrists. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a watch that is an incredible watch for somebody who wants either smaller watches or just has a small wrist and can't sport a 42mm dive watch for example. Today I have a watch that you probably didn't hear about. It's the Blompa Basiska 38mm. This watch is in my opinion the perfect smaller dive watch especially if you have smaller wrists or you just prefer smaller watches. I think you're gonna really enjoy this episode. But guys, allow me to start off by thanking Exquisite Timepieces for supplying me this watch to review for you guys. If you're interested in this watch or any other watch from Blopa, Omega, Breguet, Grand Seiko, they have a lot of really cool brands. Make sure you check out ExquisiteTimepieces.com and let them know that you heard about them from this channel. If you do, they'll hook you up over there at Exquisite Timepieces. So one thing the Rolex Submariner has over this watch is proper marketing. While Rolex is in fact king at marketing, Blopa seems to fall behind. That said, that wasn't always the case for the brand. Back in 1983, Jean-Claude Biver and his friend Jacques Piguet bought the rights back to the Blopa name. Now Blopa only had one watch at the time, and Jean-Claude Biver and his friend had to think outside of the box to make a statement at Basel World. So what would you do in a situation like this where you have a brand competing with brands that are showcasing hundreds of watches? Blopa couldn't show up to the table with only one watch, so here's what they decided to do they decided to show up with nothing at all. The result? Well, that year, everybody was talking about Blopin and asking one another if they've seen the watch and what even was going on. The marketing was absolutely genius. Now, I'm not gonna bore you guys too much with the history of this brand. However, I am gonna talk about a few key things that makes this brand kind of important in the watch world for those of you who've never heard of this brand before. Blopa's main highlight was their slogan during the quartz crisis, which was around the 1970s. Their slogan was, since 1735, Blopa has never produced a quartz watch, and we never will. The key here is 1735. That makes Blopa the oldest surviving watchmaking brand in the world. Now in 1983, the acquisition was made by Biver and his friend Jacques Piguet when the company was about to shut down, and the quartz crisis had already destroyed many watch brands. With the new ownership, Mr. Biver and his partner decided to go against the quartz crisis and while everybody was giving in and continued to do quartz watches, Blopa decided to continue and keep making mechanical watches to keep the industry alive. Now the last thing you need to know is around the 1950s, the 50 Fathoms was introduced and it hit the market in 1953, making Blopa the first brand to ever introduce a dive watch and it actually predates icons like the Submariner and the Seamaster. Now fast forward to today and we have a very special watch from the brand, the midside basset cap. The first thing you notice when handling the piece is the quality. At this price point, we expect a high quality product and Blopa does not disappoint. You have a fairly light but solid little dive watch with an extremely striking blue dial. The next thing you notice is the iconic vintage aesthetic of the watch that is actually the grandfather of most vintage inspired dive watches. Now with that being said, you only have to look at Pico brands and even some major brands when they make something that is vintage inspired, it tends to be a homage or a direct copy to the Basset Calf, which is actually what makes this very disappointing that this watch isn't as popular as it should be because this watch is the grandfather of all dive watches. Now back to the specs, the watch has a case that is mostly brushed with some minor surfaces that are polished and the watch is finished to an excellent level. Of course, that is expected at this price point. The next thing you need to know, the watch has a sapphire crystal and a ceramic bezel. And finally, the loom is amazing, but it's not the best loom I've seen out there, but it is pretty legible at night. Now the watch houses a 38mm case which is a perfect size for a mid-size dive watch. In fact, many would argue that dive watches look best at around 38 to 39mm and aiding the comfort of the piece is a 13.4mm thickness which isn't slim by any means nor did we expect an ultra slim watch but for a dive watch it is pretty comfortable. Now the watch is also fantastic for a daily piece 
as it has 300 meters of water resistance for, you know, when you randomly decide you want to go diving. The main complaint I have with this watch is the date window. It's extremely forced and while it isn't too distracting, if you're someone like me who prefers a no date, this might be a negative. In my opinion, if you're gonna put a date window, you need to embrace it. Put it at the 3 o'clock or the 6 o'clock position, not in a no man's land, which seems kind of awkward in my opinion. Personally, I think this is a fantastic everyday watch, even though some would argue that they would go with the black dial version. I feel like the blue dial is actually versatile enough that it will go with anything you wear. Add to that that mid-sized case and it's a very comfortable everyday piece. Now finally, let's talk about the star of the show. If this beautiful dive watch doesn't convince you, then maybe it's caliber will. This watch houses the Blopa Caliber 1150, a movement with around 100 hours. Yes, I said it, 100 hours of power reserve. The Caliber 1150 is around 3.25 mm thick with a diameter of 26.20. Now the Caliber 1150 has two mainspring barrels. Now the free sprung balance provides better long term accuracy and the movement itself isn't new to the Blancpain catalog but it is a serviceable reliable caliber which is a better choice than a complicated hard to service movement in a tool watch. Finally the fact that you have a hundred hours of power reserve makes this caliber a perfect watch for an everyday piece and the perfect caliber for a tool watch that you would be purchasing at this price point. But guys, let us know, do you like this watch? What don't you like about it? Let us know in the comment section below. And again, I wanted to thank Exquisite Timepieces for providing this watch in for review. If you're interested in this watch or any other watch, make sure you check out ExquisiteTimepieces.com. Let them know that you heard about them from this channel and they'll hook you up over there at Exquisite Timepieces. Guys, thank you so much for joining me again and I will see you guys in the next one.